Z. And we're ready to jump into this in the top left-hand corner of Oceanborn, which is our favorite map of the day so far, apparently. A blue Protoss from Platinum Heroes is Shadone. And spawning over in the bottom right, playing as the Red Zerg, it is Wayne. Formerly known as Ratata, formerly known as Vanya, now he's Wayne. I just love that on Discord he's called Wayne Ratvan. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, that's what his name is on Discord. He's called Wayne Ratvan. <laughs> what what team is he playing for currently? Because I don't know if they all fancy He's on uh, the Starlight Twinkle squad, I believe. Which that's is... also a funny name. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it is. And it's also kind of an interesting team because they, they had Spirit and then Spirit left to join uh, Na'Vi. And now I think Starlight Twinkle is actually Wayne. I think Cham's still on Starlight Twinkle. Maybe Christiana is too. And uh, and then like a bunch of Chinese players. So it's... Uh, Wait, yeah. did, did, was Spirit on Starlight Twinkle? Did he go yeah, from... Yeah, for, for about six weeks or so. From Sidestorm okay, to... So oh, well, did he get picked up by Sidestorm first? I think he went from Starlight to Sidestorm to Na'Vi. I think that's the, the route. Oh, really? Did. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I remember being on Sidestorm for quite some time, just because I thought, hey, that's a pretty sick roster for, like, Team Leagues, you know, having yeah. Spirit and oh, no, uh, Max Packs on the go. Um, but, yeah, these players that we're looking at right here, like Wayne Shadown, in my head, when I think about the tip-top in Europe, like, these guys are not necessarily your top eight contenders, but they are guys that are scary for the top eight contenders. Like, Wayne has never been your, I'm going to sit back, play that nice, safe, late game Zerg style. You know, he's all about, he's the mini a laser in a way. Like, if there is a, sh a sharp timing that is hard to defend, but, you know, you can execute it and do well with it, Wayne will absolutely be on that. And he's absolutely dangerous with it. Like, I think he was the player that had that series against Gung Fu, <laughs> which was, uh, maybe it was on, was it oh, a map no. like this? I think it was, you know, where it was just like a disaster. Like he absolutely had the game and then like three storms landed and killed 200 supply. It was beautiful. Yeah. Um, or maybe it was Site Delta, actually. Site Delta, I think. Um, but but yeah, it's, he's a fun one. And Shadown, he's also a Protoss with like his own funky twist on things. Like, I think he's also reeled it in a little bit where he's not, giga cheesy all the time he's actually quite solid behind it but yeah not he's also quite a tricky player to go up against yeah and, and i mean we've seen shadon have have moments in this event as well and these regionals before right he, he challenged clem that season right gave clem a loss and a run for his money and that was a uh, a good time so you know to me these are two players who absolutely challenge to make playoffs they can absolutely be top 16 in this region but they're not going to be there every time and it's, you know, it's never a guarantee for them to get there. And that's obviously shown so far by their score lines. They're both one and one. Obviously, again, fighting to kind of improve on that today. And uh, yeah, I think that's obviously going to be a very fun one to watch and uh, to see kind of pan out. The, the previous matches for these guys as well, very interesting, because Wayne actually lost to Battle B initially before beating Fujumi, but he did not look good against Fujumi. He really should have probably lost the uh, game number uh, two that he played. Uh, Fujumi just pulled the trigger like a moment too soon. And then Shadon beat DNS, but lost a spirit, and I don't think there's any shame in losing a spirit, so actually in terms of form, in terms of what I've seen from these guys in this event so far, I actually think I go into this kind of favoring Shadone, but on any given day I would have normally have picked Wayne, I think, so that's kind of a fun factor as well. I, I'd be totally with you. Um, like, <clears throat> it, in my head, like Wayne, he's kind of had these surprising results here and there, where it's like, you know, he, he's dangerous, man, like... Uh, was it in WTL where he went like 1-1 one, one against Serral or something? I mean, it was yeah. probably like, oh, it was a weird day. And it was like that, uh, frickin' A, Rod who set of course. It was like that kind of map. But he, he's dangerous on those. Already these oracles having a nice little visa over here, Wardy. This is uh, really good stuff for Shadown so far. Yep, I'm getting in. Five drones already going down. It's a fantastic start. There's Twilight Council, Forge, Robe of Facility halfway done. All of that coming through. The extra gates coming up. The Nexus coming down. The charge on the plus one continuing to build as well. So we just get plenty of upgrades and setup. And obviously any workers you get along the way with your oracles is only going to be a big plus. You know, Wayne loves to play aggressively. He will play timing focused. And any worker you kill is going to reduce the strength of those timings, right? So... That's going to be your kind of road to victory here for Shadone. Reduce the strength of those timings, give yourself the best possible chance of surviving through. Mm. The longer you force this, I think the better off it will be for Shadone. Also, so 
Okay, Shadone only went up to two oracles here. Like, very often, Protoss can go two, three. Either one's pretty damn good. He's already got damage done. He's also not going for blink immediately. This is very quickly into charge, and he's got a forge on the go. It does look like Wayne is going to go very heavily into Roaches. A lot of Zergs like to go for the melee upgrades, but he's directly into that range upgrade category. And he's on that perfect drone count as well, where he can morph in a few extra buildings and get onto like 66 drones, but taking that fourth base pretty damn early as well. And he's got away with a lot of greed here within regards to how he's been droning. And oh, these oracles a bit... In fact, is there only one? Okay, okay. That was a little bit funny there. These oracles just being met by one queen. That was very fortunate for Wayne. Yep, no, that was actually very uh, uh, fortunate indeed, as we just have the Temple Archives, by the way, finishing. So this is going to turn into potentially a bit of a timing focus from Shadon. He's going to have Archons plus one in charge. Like, this is a very aggressive army that can absolutely do a lot. So let's see what he wants to try and achieve. He's warping into the bottom side. I mean, even just running into and cancelling the fourth phase could be a pretty big win for him right now. Again, slow down the Zerg. He's going to not go for the fourth. Instead, he actually wants to try and fight the fifth. No, he's uh, sorry, the third. He kind of doesn't decide. Now he is going to decide to go into the third base and going to go for some drones here. There's Roaches out, so maybe he would have been better off just trying for the fourth base and getting that cancel. But he clearly believes in his fight to some extent. We're warping in a few more Zelts as we go. Just got to keep that prism safe. So far, we're okay, but this is just too many Roaches, I think. Oy. So we get ourselves seven, eight drones, but we lost an Archon. We lost an Oracle to the Sporkroll on the south side during this as well. And that will be that. Yeah, I, you know, that all looked a bit indecisive from Shutdown. Like, that was the word that I would absolutely use to describe that. It it was a bit all over the shop, where to attack, where not to attack. Uh, even kind of saving a drone with the stasis there, it was <laughs> about as unfortunate as it could go. But it's not as if he's not geared up behind it for something else. Like, he, he's getting the Immortals out, going up to double Robo. But this... This is where Wayne is the most dangerous. Like, I, I talked about that 66 drone number being the perfect saturation for three bases, and he's done nothing but produce roaches since then. Shut down. He's in trouble here, Wardy. Yeah, no, just pure roach production, and, and yeah, this is where Shadon's going to, you know, really be punished for having lost any amount of supply previously. Storm is not done yet, and I don't think Wayne is going to be kind of waiting around to give him a chance to get Storm. He's going to morph a couple of Ravages, but he should just be pushing forwards and going... I mean, Storm might finish up during the fight, but how much damage will be done by then? There's 112 to 48 army supply. It's very one-sided, and as we push in initially, looks pretty good for Wayne. Looks as though Storm, 10 seconds away, has a chance to get finished up, but, I mean, the position's already here for the Roaches. Let's see if the Storm can make any amount of difference. I'll tell you what, Shadown's being so patient with putting up a battery overcharge here, isn't he? And, I mean, Storm is ready, and Wayne, that is one of his worst enemies here. The Storms are big. The Warp Prism's still alive. The Juggling starting to happen now that shield battery overcharge kind of went off on no units up there in the north yeah. that was definitely problematic and wayne here is just pumping out units probes are pulled that's never a sign that you want that immortal in the south being left for done over there and that's just too much wayne yep too much wayne is just going to be successful right i mean he's just going to keep on breaking onto this base the third will fall the robo facility one of them is here as well so that's going to get shut down at some point another immortal drops and shadon just kind of picked the wrong build for playing against Wayne, I feel like. Like, Zealot Archon against a guy that likes to be aggressive and build up a lot of roaches. This was a rough choice to build, and especially attacking in the way he did. I honestly think, imagine he just goes and cancels the fourth base, pulls back home, doesn't necessarily lose anything. Then I think this is a defendable position, right? Because you get Storm up, and you get a couple of Immortals. That is good enough. It's just that initial loss of units for not gaining anything on the other side of the map. That really, I mean, let's say he didn't gain anything. He got, like, eight drones or so. I just feel like that could have been and should have been so much more if Shadon really wanted to see success in this. Yeah, that um, that was definitely not what he was looking for. Second map will be be Alcyone, which uh, also a fairly uh, standard map uh, for these guys today. But definitely, that was the kind of game that Wayne wants to play, you know? Like, it's, it's not super fancy, super crazy. It's pretty damn straightforward. You defend, you attack. Like, that, that's basically Wayne's games in a nutshell. Like, or he's just the one straight up attacking, but your opponent making it making the choice even easier for you? Frickin', frickin' A. Like, a nice play out of Wayne just to make sure that that game went as planned. And, yeah, Shadown has to be a little bit more careful with his build order choice, I think. Yeah, well, going into Alcyone, this is obviously my boy. Can you get a little bit interesting because of that gold base? If the Zerg chooses to take that early, do you then want to try and be aggressive onto that? Do you let them have it? Those are questions to ask, so 
Now Cyani will be our map, and you will see what Wayne and Shadow have in store for us here as we head into map number two. We'll be starting in the top right-hand side from the Platinum Heroes, the Blue Protoss, who is down one. It is Shadon. And spawning over in the bottom left with a nice fiery win in game one, it is Wayne. We'll see what Shadon comes up with with this time. Uh, I mean, Alcyone is still a decent map for Oracle openings. You, you do tend to find Oracle openings have just been like the, the bread and butter of Protoss uh, versus Zerg for a long time now. Just that, that, that build definitely requires your opponent to not be that prepared or a guy that's looking to play a later stage in the game. But Wayne, it, it just... He already had it in mind that he wanted to go Roaches, didn't he? And for Charge Lot Archon, especially in those numbers, it wasn't massive numbers. And I mean, you do kind of have to go very quickly. Um, this game, Shadow did go for a little bit of a hatch block. So the third hatch will be at the third base and not at the natural. Already something that Zergs do plan ahead for, but a nice little start for Shadow here. Yeah, just gonna get that ready to go and we do have a Proby. Just nibbling a little bit here and there as well. And you got some pool coming up, a couple of drones coming about. As so we have ourselves the yeah, Nexus is dropping in. Obviously, we'll see what the uh, the tech will be eventually from Shadow, and that's going to tell us what kind of game he wants to play. Uh, again, outside is sometimes the map players play a bit differently on because of the possible gold base, but there's no gold yet from Wayne, so probably just a Stargate out of Shadow, and then we'll see what his follow-up turns out to be this time on the back of those oracles. Um, that would be my assumption. I mean, Wayne can again play kind of crazy too, but. I mean, like I say, to me, he's less of like this crazy, oh, I'm going to knight us all in you guy versus just, I'm going to set up normally and then cut drones and hit you with the time. So mm. we'll see uh, if that is in store for us. And we'll see if he goes straight to Roaches, because you're right, some players do still play that melee upgrade. We maybe don't go all the way to like plus two melee nowadays. We play melee into missiles later on, but he really did just hard commit to Roaches early in that last game. Obviously worked out wonders for him. Game so we'll see if that's the plan mm. again. And so Shadon going to hit us up with a little pause here. Uh, hopefully nothing too major. We'll get back into this ASAP. Yeah, we had a pause earlier as well. Luckily, it was fixed very, very quickly. I believe these players do go on different accounts yeah, for they this. Do. Yep. The All right. Tournament so official some, accounts. Some, yeah. So sometimes it's just setting yourself up Game nicely. Easy. Maybe a hotkey was missing, but normally just, you know, control paste it over. Just make sure everything's the same. But it will be a Stargate again for Shadown and... You know, it's, it's just like the nicest way to get into a normal game, not be caught off guard, get to scout, get to get vision, get to be safe for your third base as well. Ah, just a, a nice way to open up. Yep. Nice way to open up. I mean, like you say, just going to be safe, steady. Stargate halfway done already. And that hatch you dropping down from Wayne as he takes a very normal three base setup. And uh, yeah, Link Speed's about halfway done. Warp Gate is building from Shadone. Again, I guess very much so just expecting this to be oracles out of the Stargate. Early game PvZ does not leave a lot to the imagination when a Stargate comes down. It's usually three to four minutes of the expected. And then with the oracles, we obviously get something to start to watch. Mm. And just on about this map, you did mention the goal base. Oh, let's those adepts finish up. Okay, the hit so far. Not bad. We'll be able to deal with this very small number of things, but Wayne not losing any drones so far. That's what he's after. And he just holds down the drone key. Uh, when it comes to the gold base, it's obviously far more beneficial for Zerg on this map in that they can get it very quickly as their fourth base and then really get pumping. And if you told Wayne, like, hey, man, there's a fourth base on this map for, like, a gold. And it's like, really? Like, I, I can all in even harder now? It's like, I, I, I bet he's going to go for it. Like, I can't see him not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it seems like that's the... Uh... The kind of the trigger for Wayne is they say, whoa, I can be aggressive, let's go. Uh, adepts show up, and Oracle will fight a few of the Lings protecting the Adepts. I mean, at least we're losing Lings and not drones, right? I mean, anytime you lose drones, it's bad. You're losing Lings, yeah, they have to be replaced, but losing drones really affects your economy. The Adept comes across here, the Oracle will go one more time, but it's going to be in the middle of all these Queens. I'm not sure it's getting out alive. It's close, Ooh. it just gets out. That's dangerous, because losing Oracles, loses map control, loses defensive options again against Wayne. You want to have as much possible defense as you can. Apps. 
absolutely do. Like, even for stasis is later on or just revelating that creep, you know, you don't want to be going for an observer to get rid of all that stuff, and you really lose a lot of tempo and really allow your opponent to just get going. It does look like the Twilight will be going down along with the Forge. So, so far, it could be very well the same kind of build, but on a map like this, I do like Stalkers being able to navigate over these mineral fields and three oracles do get to spot this fourth base going down which they are past that mineral field but they're not on the gold and shadow should be able to get a nice little cancel here to start things off look at that the queens they want to get down there wardy but you need to get rid of two mineral fields to do it yeah what a great uh play being able to get the fourth just with the oracles is great now the adept's gonna show up too well that's one dead oracle surely it's the low hp one being targeted so it goes down immediately but the Adepts show up, and the Lings are not nearby. The Drones now have to pull, and this is seven workers already dead. So, again, Wayne is definitely struggling early here to, to just deal with his damage, deal with his aggression. And Shadon is not going to commit to the Shade into the main. He's going to recall out instead. That should save all of these Adepts. And they do get out. And the Oracles, again, two of them still healthy at the very least. It was the one that was low that got targeted down. So, two healthy Oracles remaining. I mean, a great set of successes from Shadon. Cancelled fourth phase, a bunch more Drones going down. Just fairly free damage being found across the course of this. I mean, he's lost three Adepts and an Oracle, but he's killed 11 drones, 16 Lings. And there's the Roach setup coming in from Wayne. But again, this is going to be done off of a pretty rough situation. Like, he's not as strong as he would want to be at this point in time. Yeah, I, I very much like how Shadown has changed things up this game. It's just been more aggressive with Harass. Like, more commitment, but getting the damage done and... Wayne, he's getting himself set up to get up to about 66 drones, and yet again, and he's sharking around with these Zerglings, but you see here, Shadow, and he's like, you know what, second Robo, I've gone into Blink first, not the charge this game, I'm far more set up for a normal game, Wayne will get that Infestation Pit, which does open up Hive Tech later on, and having two Oracles in this group of Gateway units, it's something you do have to respect to the, the Zerg, but Wayne fortunately enough for him, is very quick on producing those roaches nice and early here. Yep. Lots of roaches coming up as these few stalkers. I was don't have blink yet, but you do generally push before blink because there's not a lot to necessarily punish these stalkers from being here, and especially if it's roaches. You know, this is where, like, lings could maybe surround. Roaches cannot, but even lings would be, you know, tackled on by the oracles, so... Yeah, there's generally an answer to everything right now, and that's why Shadon can already be on the map. Roach, these, uh, Roach speed finishes, and we head straight into the Hydra Den now as Wayne. So he's going to begin to move into this. Uh, but Shadon's tech is looking good. Two Colossi on the way at once. I mean, that's perfect against Hydras, right? So you're going to have good splash damage available against these kind of very fragile units. Again, i got to love a lot of what's going on right now. He is on a clock, though. Cause it's, it's not as if Wayne is not going to be prepared, like, minutes down the line for this, because a Hive tech is pretty quick. And... Shadow, like, whenever you go Oracles, you're a little bit on a... Or rather, whenever you go Colossus, you're a little bit on a clock. Like, you know that they only have a certain amount of time to live until Vipers come out in the field. Unless you're in one of those late-game situations where it's, like, the feedback fight against the Vipers and stuff. But will that get to this Lurk attack on the way for Wayne? So a very, very different game to game one. Yep, Lurk again. Already in production. So if you can get the Lurkers, then again, a brilliant little something. You've got to imagine there's going to be a time in here with a few Colossi, that Xen Thermal Lance, that plus two attack of create. All of that could hit just as Lurkers. Even if Lurkers are on the map, they're not going to be upgraded yet. So that really would be the time in Shadon looks to hit here to just minimize the effect of what Wayne is teching into. So we'll see if that mm. becomes an option for him right now. Still trying to be, you know, taking this on with the Stalkers a little bit, clear out some creep. Anything you can do to make that future attack a little bit more, uh, you know, simple to commit to. Colossi has shown up here as well, so we're very much so ready to kind of take this fight as soon as the upgrades pop. We're going to be in position for the very get-go. Absolutely, and I mean, that gold base is vulnerable over here, and Vipers are in, or rather, Hydras are in the mix here, and Colossus, they do do well against them, but that is a lot of Roaches getting very much on top of this Stalker Death Ball, but Wardy, I think Shadown, his army right now is just packing the muscle just enough that it needs. I gotta agree with you. It is looking good. The Colossi are not going to be touched by anything. The Vipers are on the way, but that's a long way to go because you've got to wait from the build, consume some energy up, and there's three Colossi here right now. I believe a fourth is about to walk in from the top right of the screen, so we've got four Colossi about to come powering through. I mean, this gold base doesn't stand a chance. Wayne just has to kind of bank on somehow, some way, getting these Vipers available, and even then, hitting every single abduct doesn't guarantee your defense here. 
First Lurk is coming up, but they're not quite ready yet either. I mean, the timing is absolutely pristine here from Shadon. He blinks on the Lurk as they will not even get a chance to burrow as one of them gets burrowed and it didn't even fire a shot off. There's the abducts from the Vipers. Two Colossi do go down a third one as well now, but there's just too many Stalkers, which means that this game is done and dusted. And Shadon is going to be taking this to a game number three. I like the change of pace that he did that game. Like, it was far less super committed with the yeah. attack that he did, but it was a lot of finesse play, which, you know, a lot of the harass did a lot of good damage. The adepts as well being used in combination. Killed a lot of zerglings as well as drones and just slowed down Wayne uh, massively. And it wasn't the kind of game that Wayne wanted to be playing where it's like, oh, I have to deal with this, I have to deal with that. I would just want to get going, man. And it's... Yeah, a, a nicer change of gear here for Shadown. So I'm, I'm looking, I'm curious how Wayne is going to adjust because third map will be Ghost River. And this, it's it's a smaller map, Wardy. It, it definitely is. Trying to get in there, deal damage. Like, I think it's far easier for a Protoss to get a good read on what the Zerg's going for on a map like this. I can absolutely imagine a world where Wayne just like knocks down rocks and like goes like super quick across the map and everything, you know, so absolutely imagine that as we count down into ghost river like you say it's a very aggressive map there's a lot of potential for aggression to me this is a wayne playground we'll see what shadon has planned and in store to kind of make this uh, doable absolutely get getting right on into it now it's it's you know it's refreshing when we do actually get to see some of these new maps given how uh tentative the players have been about actually playing on them and i mean I don't know who this one favors. Like, the third base is, is very obvious which one you have to take. It's very open for the Protosses, which for Wayne, you have to be like, hey, it's a very open third base, timing attack, let's go, go, go. But spawning over in the top left, currently 1 1 in this series. It is the Blue Toss, it is Shadown. Top right, our red Zerk from the Starlight Twinkle. This is going to be Wayne. Ending up on game three here. Early, oh, am I DC? Oh, I, I see it too. It's the referee, oh, unbelievable. Thank goodness, you know, the ghost of Emil at it again. <laughs> yeah, ghost of Emil. Well, uh, our referee is going to time out here. I think we can resume without the referee. I don't think that's actually the end of the world, so that shouldn't be a problem apart from having to go through this countdown. And hey, at least it happened early in the game, that's always good news. Better than it happened mid fight or anything like that. Yeah, mid-fight where you get to think about how you're going to obliterate your opponent and all oh, that cheese is coming. They have to wait a full minute for it to happen. It's like, ah! But <laughs> yeah, no, uh, better, better time at the start than anything else. But well, yeah, what do you think about this map, Wardy, for this matchup? Yeah, you know what? I think it's very interesting. I think it's one of those maps where it really feels like there's a lot of potential options, right? Um, like your base layout's kind of given, but then there is potential for the Zerg to be aggressive. There is potential for the Protoss to be kind of aggressive as well. Like, I mean, very short if you want to go for Adepts or something, whether that's with Flaves or just kind of like we saw last game, Adepts coming across the map alongside the Oracles, for example. So, yeah, definitely some options across the board. <laughs> you know, this is my uh, this is my dad brain at this point. I even look at that natural base that's kind of blocked off by these minerals and these big rocks and being like, there was once upon a time that Protoss would utilize this and go for like Tempest in this area, like behind the natural, even getting a Tempest behind the main and the natural would be really annoying. I, yeah, I, I see cheese when I see this kind of thing and just looking for the potential opportunities. It's it's lovely, but I am looking forward to see what uh, Shadown does. So far, I'm too crazy uh, coming out of either player here. Nope, nothing to be crazy at all. Got uh, Nexus into the natural expansion. And uh, we have plenty of time to, again, sit back and wait to see what the choices will be. Yeah, I, I do think uh, maybe we see Shadon switch it up a little bit. But I think, honestly, what he's been doing has also been just good against, or good for what this map is as well. Like I said, just Adepts wandering across will hit sooner, will hit a bit harder. So, yeah. Uh, this map, it's so intriguing to me as well because the longer this map goes, like, you are limited on bases. You know, it's not, there's not just endless bases to take. You kind of reach that maximum at six. So, you know, you're kind of capped in terms of how much of a late game you can play as well. And especially in PvZ, that can be very standoffish later in the game. 
it kind of gets very intriguing because you're like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, you've become very standoffish and this map really encourages that, but then with less money available, so you're kind of on a timer from the very get-go in terms of how you're trading, how well you're putting out damage and so on. All of these things are pretty big factors. No, definitely, definitely. Wayne is doing a good do job droning up, shutdown again with the Stargate. Not too surprising at this point, obviously. Uh, Zergling Speed is on the go, taking the drones off the gas as well, just putting all the minerals you could possibly get into that drone saturation going. Getting the third base up at the natural as well. A standard is a standard does. Yep. Very uh, straightforward at the moment as we just uh, see a couple of adepts going to come across and see if they can find damage. Shadon has found damage early game every time so far, right? Uh, it took a little bit longer in game two, but he still got there eventually. The adepts definitely be a big part of that. So we'll see if that's something that Wayne can tighten up on because obviously just a cleaner early game can set him up for success. But I mean, these adepts just commit in. That's a massive drone pull. The entire mineral line pulling away. We lose two wow. workers anyways. These lings will go down and these adepts are barely even hurt. So this is a fantastic start. We come back around this side. We're going to get a third drone. Now we shade out. That's a hugely successful opening because these adepts are still alive. Now Ling Speed kicks in, but I don't think we've got enough Lings left to kill these adepts. So if the adepts just turn and fight, they should be good. And uh, oh, they shade Ooh. away. I mean, messed up micro, right? He could have had a couple more adepts, uh, adept shots off there. But either way, the adepts are out alive. The damage done was good. A win already for Shadon early game. Absolutely. I mean, Wayne will be able to maybe? Nah, I mean... I was thinking if he had a couple more lings alive, hey, even if he kept those lings alive from earlier in that harass, maybe he could have got the cancel there. But here, this oracle comes in, gets a little bit of extra damage done. I mean, the oracle did stay, maybe outstay its welcome a tiny bit. But so far, Shadown throughout the series just looks like he's getting better and better at dealing with Wayne. Yeah. No, I mean, definitely, uh, definitely true, right? I mean, you just uh, kind of dealing with aggression early, then you know, being very successful with your own aggression. Now we'll see what the triple oracle can do this game, because again, the oracles have definitely been a factor throughout the previous fights as well, so this is also going to be pretty uh, fun to see. As we just have Nexus coming up to finishing. It's oh, another oracle as well. That's going to be oracle number four now building, so Shadon really believes in this oracle count. That's two drones now, and yeah, oracle four. What an interesting choice as these adepts continue across the map very interesting like there's no twilight council on the way either like this is just a very prolonged harass stage of the game isn't it and i mean mm -hmm. these adepts do get on just a handful of zerglings this is not enough to deal with this like this is actually very very scary if you're wayne but they are caught fighting queens for maybe a bit too long here do get on into the main not too much to stop them just yet you know they're gonna get a couple final drones the low hp adept finally target fired and this will be the end of the adept harass so yeah, I mean, now it kind of questions, was the fourth Oracle worth building at all? Because it does, like you mentioned, delay the Twilight Council, so that future tech is then slowed down. But then you do have an extra Oracle than usual to kind of go harass with. I would have liked that if this game was still in the chaotic stage with Adepts around and everything else. But now, well, I guess now we'll just see what four Oracles can do. I mean, they could activate and try and cancel off this fourth base. Uh, queens are here. We actually just dive on the Queens as well. That works. First Queen is going to eat a transfusion. That's the only transfuse available, I believe. We're going to get the Queen. We're going to pull back. And that's apparently going to be it. So all of that for one queen. Pretty lackluster. Pretty lackluster. Like, sometimes I've liked it when people do go for a fourth oracle. Say if one's, like, massively wounded. Just because it does allow more diving potential. Then you just use that one with your army to revelate and such. But this didn't look quite the case for Shadown. But he is going into very heavy gateway play here. Getting the plus one. And it looks like Wayne is just going for very much the same old, same old. Oh! Both stalkers do die there. Keeping those alive would have been very nice for a down. But now he is able to go on the map. And the fourth base is... Pr this is a, f a funny map. Because normally, the more bases you take, the more the closer to your opponent they become. But in a way, they get further away from your opponent. So mm -hmm. it is a little bit tricky for the Protoss to get in a position where you can actually deal with that four base nicely. Kind of have to go past the third base, which in Wayne's case, this game definitely works in his favor. Well, it's fun because the map is short to begin with, but then it doesn't get even shorter right over time because that's when, mm. you know, Terrans would always love this or Zerg Aggression would always love this. It actually has this weird moment on the fourth base where you're right, you go away from your opponent. So taking a fourth actually becomes quite naturally easy as long as you got three bases decently. And so, yeah, the attack here from Shadon is not pressuring the fourth, but instead likely to try and trade on the third. 
And this is more than likely just going to be an attempt to take down a few roaches here and there, not much more than that, because I just don't think you will be able to find much more than that as these stalkers continue to blink back. Killing Roach and the pushback there. Some extra stalkers showing up and Overlord going down, and we actually continue to push in. We get a Ravager on the go. Nicely caught. Shadown's actually microing this really well. Like, his micro so far has been a good battle of attrition. He's getting a fourth or fourth base is down behind us as well. I mean, even these stasises could be very annoying at some point. Like, losing the queen potential here and acting like a little bit of a wall, that's just annoying. Yeah, very true as these oracles. Oh, the oracles. Yeah, still activating, right? Going after those ravages. And this army Shadon just keeps on pressing forward. Roach, Ravager, Ling, Queen. Continue to take a bunch of shots. You are going to see a couple more corrosive vials coming through and just forcing these stalkers back. But the stalkers keep on finding damage. They keep on trading, and the more they're able to do this, the better off they uh, the, uh, the better off they end up. Absolutely, even an aggressive blink on top of this. And I mean, the ravages—they're going down as well. These oracles—they've just been annoying, man. Like it hasn't been, you know, night and day difference to what they normally get done. But the fact that they've just been there to soak up a little bit of the shots from the queens, put the stasis is down, go for the ravages as well, and shut down behind this. He is suffering from a supply block right now, but. All the fighting in going on here, also limiting this creep spread. It's been great. Yeah, it, it controls the game, right? That, that's what it comes down to. You're controlling the game right now. And the more you control this game, the better off you are. Now, he can, keeps on building on these stalkers. There's plus two slowed down by, I believe, Contaminate. So a little bit slower on that upgrade than he would like. And now Wayne is getting towards the hive. So we are getting towards the hive. That's about halfway done. If he can get better tech up, right, that's going to give you some opportunity. The Oracles are going to find that uh, fourth base currently undefended. A few Hydras split off to go deal with it. Man, I sure don't know. Supply lead now in his favor, and he has uh, continued to look pretty good here. The Oracles all low HP, but getting out alive. Yeah, I did lose one for his trouble. I, I was thinking, like, you have to be very careful with moving over just a small handful of Hydras, because Oracles can deal just as much damage to Hydras as any light armored unit and now these stalkers march over here so he gets to that far away fourth base and that is a lot of stalkers just parading through this army and getting good economic damage and i'm looking at the bank wardy he has nine gates available right now he's going to be on triple robo production very soon templar archives he's sitting pretty with 80 works as well this game is all about shutdown right now yeah shutdown 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 he is uh continuing to look very good but Again, though, you know, Lurgaden's coming up and Fest is coming out. These things are coming in that could maybe give you a bit of a chance later on as Wayne. And he's going to actually push Shadon back here as well. Yes, okay, the damage done is huge. Fourth base gone. Uh, Wayne having to rebuild this. And Shadon is also teching up, so probably going to be fine at the end of the day. But, uh, I mean, at least Wayne is getting some tech. That might at least give him a shot at this, you know? Uh, I, I like getting adepts here and there and everywhere as well. Like, this is just annoying. Three immortals at a time with Storm. And it's Lurkers only just coming online. Like, yeah, yeah I, 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 I like Shadow. Yeah, I just dead Yeah, I think he's dead. I think he's very much dead. And trying to keep it alive with some transfusions, not going to happen. Gets a little cheeky Hydra for his trouble. Look at his bank as well, Wardy. He can produce for absolute days here. And he's thinking about getting a fifth base. I saw that camera move over to the, sa the very southwesterly point. Ah, Wayne just hasn't been able to get going this game. Look at the income tab right now. It's like 3k 1200 versus 1.5600. Like, Wayne is literally mining half as much. Yep. No, he is. Uh, he's got a you know really terrible income and just doesn't really have a way to do anything he wants to. I mean, vipers are coming out, but there's going to be high templars available. Storm is going to be available as well. And that's going to have stalkers coming through, catching a couple of well, a lurker now, a couple of lurkers oh. making three lurkers. So they don't even get burrowed, man. Before they get adaptive talents, that ability to uh, move around and reburrow quickly, they are just so slow. <laughs> they are. I'm. I, I'm in. Oh dear, that's. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's a little bit of a donation there. Now we can't oh. see that lurker. Uh, it's yeah. a bit unfortunate. I am loving this uh, Overlord Caravan, by the way. And Zealots run into the natural, constantly dealing damage. Wayne is bleeding all over the shop. Even over at the fourth again. Ah, really good play out of Shadow, man. Really good play. Yeah, he's just controlling it well. He knows exactly the kind of army he's got. He knows he doesn't want to give his opponent too long to like turtle up to enough lurkers that it would be actually a problem to fight in. He denies a base again, right? So Wayne just cannot possibly keep up. His mining is being disrupted the entire time. Third dead, then, well, it was fourth dead, then third dead, fourth dead again. And, uh, 
Oh, that's a big factor as you see. This army gonna come back oh. in one more time and just gonna be in mean again, just catching the lurkers kinda unburrowed. I mean one lurker's burrowed here, but one lurker of splash just isn't enough to force this army back on its own, and so Shadone takes another good trade and it just keeps on going. Ah, does manage to join Cow A immortal, but I mean Wayne, like, the supply is constantly dipping for him. He's been unable to mine off four bases uh, consistently, right? And Shadown, he's just teching up that immortal count as well. It's up to seven, soon to be nine. And he now finally has detection in the mix, so can probably deal with the lurkers a lot better than he was doing. And remember, these are very well upgraded Protoss units. Plus two, plus three, soon to be done. Warp Prism comes in. Maybe this is just the icing on the cake here at this point, and it's going to get the job done. Yep. I see a few more drones continue to drop down here. I mean, again, it's just painful for Wayne, who is just taking damage from every single front. As do you get one little model abduct in. This all takes a shot or two. I mean, now we're just going to go for it. We're going to jump on these lurkers because there's nothing to protect oh. them. And that is going to do it. Yeah, that was an interesting storm, but GG called. And Shadon takes 